Hello, it's me, and I've once again pulled the 3x4x5 off the shelf. And as you can probably guess I take any excuse that I can to do that. Um, somebody brought to my attention, a viewer brought to my attention, this scenario that I had never gone over and actually has, had never encountered before. As you can see in this situation, everything is put in except three pieces. This is actually, it's not a parody situation, it's like a three cycle. One, two, three are out. Now the one that you probably have is is likely a variation of this, maybe not exactly the same thing, but what you're going to notice is with one of the pieces um, it's the right color on one side but not the other. With the other piece it's the right color on one side here but not the other as you can see here. And then there's one piece that none of the sides are correct. It's not oriented um, with any of the sides that fit with any of these colors. So that's close to probably what yours look like. <clears throat> Now what's interesting is, uh, uh, bear in mind also that this is the Shapeways version, the Tom Z version, it's not the MF8 um, uh, mass produced version, so your color scheme may be a, a little different, so adjust this accordingly. But what's interesting is I've put this puzzle through a lot of abuse and I've never come across this scenario. Which means if you did it exactly the way that I showed in the tutorials, you will never run across this. As to how this happened, I don't know. At first I thought, well maybe it was, uh, I've seen people use the mass produced version and I've seen them tur make turns and pieces go flying off everywhere so I figured maybe it was just reassembled wrong although the viewer had said no that's not the case because it was completely solved scrambled and then came in this position without going into a uh, needing to be reassembled so I thought maybe within the process of turning it something had shifted but that's probably not the case um, I think probably what happened is at some point before this was returned back to the cuboid form you did one of these moves. And when you did that, it kind of put things off. But I guess the main question I have is, how did you do that? How did you get in that position? Because I did find that when I finally was able to get it in this position, I was not able to put it back with the usual algorithms that I use with the parity algorithms once it's back in the cuboid form. So this is how I do that. Now watch, watch me carefully here, because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get this out of the cuboid form so that we can sort of recalibrate the puzzle and get it back into the right shape. Now in this particular scenario, this is on the right side. So uh, by this one I mean find the piece where none of the colors match the side that it's on. So it's not this piece, it's not this piece, it's this piece. Now it could be on the left side, it could be on the right side. In my case it's on the right side. So here's how you do it in, in that case. 2R. Then from here we're going to go U 2R, UI, 2L, and then do it again, U, 2R, UI, 2L. Then from here we're going to do a 2F, like so, and that kind of resets things. But from here we're going to basically do it again. Now we're going to have to continue the recalibration, so we're going to do another 2R, and then we pretty much repeat everything we just did. Um, with the previous algorithm. So that's going to be U, 2R, UI, 2L. Do it again. U, 2R, UI, 2L. And then it's pretty much recalibrated at that point, uh, believe it or not, when it's on that right side like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just putting it in in exactly the same way that I did before. So the first step, I want to get this cross back. So I'm just going to do a 2F in order to, uh, to do that. So now it's just a matter of following exactly the same rules of thumb. So this is going to be the, in my case, orange, red, and blue. So I'm going to put that down over here. Now what we can also do first is try to put these the middle layers back in. We've got some parity issues going on. I can either fix these parity issues or just do it as I'm putting these in. So I hope that's not confusing things. But this needs to go down over uh, go down over here by the red one. So I'm just going to set this up over here. So not only will this come down here, but I'm also going to fix um, something of a parity here. This isn't a parity, but this kind of is. So I might not want to put it in in conjunction with this side. I may want to wrap it around with this side here. So these two need to come in. I'm just going just to put this here and this here. Now understand that I'm doing that because while I'm putting this in, it'll fix this parity here as well. So. Again, I'm really just going about my usual solve at this point. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. 
So basically this performed that function that put that in. So what else is up here? Well this one is here, this is the yellow, orange, and blue. So yellow, orange, and blue has to come over to here. So this has to be placed here. Um, I don't know that I want to do it with this because this parity was sort of fixed, but we do have a parity over here. Now, I'm using the word parity, and at some point I'm going to explain exactly why this isn't exactly a parity, so to speak, but I'm going to leave that for now. But anyway, instead of wrapping it down through here, I'm just going to move both of these up over here so that I can pull this down here and fix this parity at the same time. To R, U, to R, UI, to R. So that places that here, I can now put this back in. So I've actually fixed all of these. Oh, no, no, I have one more to go over here. So I've got to put this in. This goes down here. So I'll just move this down to here because this is going to be the orange, yellow, and white, which goes down with this side here, orange, yellow, and white. To our U, to our UI, to our. So that's okay, created parity here. That's all right, as we're solving the top here. Which ones have all of our corners placed? This one. So we're gonna to wanna to put this at the side and just go ahead and do a corner swap to make another, to put all the rest of the corners in place here. To our U, to our UI, to our, turn, turn, to our UI, to our U, to our, this gets turned back. And as you can see, all of our corners are where they need to be. So now it's just a matter of edge swapping. This is good here. Now the way I did this, I just need to swap this white to here and this red to here, and that'll fix this parity here. To our U, to our U, to our, to U, to our, to U, to our, U, to our, UI, to our. You know, after seeing the, the mass, the, mass produce version, I really have a greater appreciation for Tom's skill because this has never popped on me. So now this has been recalibrated. This is now solvable by my techniques. As you can see this, this there's, uh, I can put this in in conjunction with this. So that's what I'm going to do first. Turn this over here. I've got parity here and here. I'm going to fix this the usual way. To R, no, I'm sorry, to U, to R, to F, to U, to U. 2F, 2R, 2U, solve the parity here, moved it up to here, solve that, 2U, 2R, now this this 2F over here, 2F, 2U, 2U, and 2F, 2R, 2U. Solve that fine, move this back. So now it's just a matter of placing these guys. And let's see, well, why don't we swap these two? That way, this red and green will be where it's supposed to be, and this will be over here to be swapped with this. So we'll swap these two, 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2U, 2F, 2R, 2U, and we've got a nice familiar thing here that we can go by, and that's 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2U, 2F, 2R, 2U, and that solves it. Now, if you happen to have that piece that I was talking about on the other side, just transpose everything that I did. So hopefully that'll help. That, I hope, represents the final frontier of how to solve any situation with this 3x4x5. But I'm actually very grateful that that particular scenario was pointed out to me because I'd never come across this. So follow my previous tutorials closely regarding this. You won't come across that. But if you do, that's how you get out of it. So, thanks for watching. Hello, me again. So there's another scenario that someone posed to me that I thought I'd fill this in. This is a somewhat seeming of a parody situation that um, this particular viewer kept walking into and had a hard time getting out of. So this one we can actually get out of. It's a four cycle and as long as you have four out, we're gonna be able to put it in in the usual way. The whole key with this is to try to set it up where we can make symmetries on both sides. So here's what we're gonna do. When you run into a situation like this where you have kind of this zigzaggy thing here, one side seems solved, and yet the other side here, this is the three by five side, you've got these out, the four by five side is in, and the three by four side is in. Now, granted again, your color scheme is gonna be different from mine. I've got the Tom Z version. You may have the mass produced version. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to put your your um, four by five side in front of you, so that you've got 
these zigzaggy parts to the right and to the left. Now, yours might be slightly skewed, it really doesn't matter. In other words, it might be opposite, it might be these two, who knows. But anyway, put it here, and we're going to do the parity algorithm, even number parity, and swap these two sides here. Now, you might not have known this, but when you swap them, it's not this coming to here, this coming to here, this here, this here. They actually zigzag when they swap. So this is going to end up down here, this is going to end up up here. So let me show you what that means. And this is going to come down here. So we're going to have two greens together, and we're going to have greens together here and yellow, yellows together here. So hold it over here and just go ahead and do your 2u, 2r, 2f, 2u, 2u, 2f, 2r, 2u. Now what that's going to do is it's going to place this over here and this over here. So we've actually got that kind of symmetry that we were looking for. What we want to do is we want to put the corners into the correct side so we can do the the edge portion, the center portion, with um, parity algorithms. So what you want to do in that case is just go ahead and do a 2R over here, so you're moving this in line with this, and just swap them so that these greens are at the green side. Again, your color scheme is different. So then just turn it like so. Once you've done that, turn it back. Now this is a configuration you can deal with. We've got parity issues here, parity issues here, and we'll just solve it accordingly. So I'm going to put these two in first, by doing the parity algorithm, splitting my F down here, which will move it up to here, then I'll solve this accordingly. So, um, even number parity algorithm, 2U, 2R, 2F, splitting it here, 2F, so then 2U, 2U, 2F, 2R, 2U, as promised, took it out here, moved it up here, 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2U, 2F, to R, to U, and we got it. Now we've got these two to deal with. No problem, turn it up here, and let's go ahead and do the same thing, only it's odd number parity algorithm. So, to U, to R, to F, over here, to F, just one, to U, then to F, to R, to U, finishing with the to F, moves the parity up to here, do it once more, to U, to R, to F, to u and to f to r to u and to f and then we just slide that back down again remembering that this creates parity at right angles but look at this this is easy now we're old hands at this so now we put this in by the usual method even number parity split over here so to u to r to f to u to u to f to r to you and you did it. All parodies are solved. So these are more ways to master the 3x4x5. So this I think completes pretty much any scenario that you can have with this. Um, if you see anything else, again bring it to my attention. I'm more than happy to pull this puzzle off the shelf and have a go at it. So um, thanks for watching and hope that helps.